Vampire Survivors is a bullet hell like shooter, and then you throw in roguelike mechanics to create a surprising but very, very satisfying game, one that's going to bring you back time and time again. Now, for a game called Vampire Survivors, it's surprising that you don't play as a vampire. There's loads of monsters in the game. You've got bats, you've got beasts, you've got mummies, other scary things too. And one thing I haven't seen yet is a vampire. That doesn't matter though, because this is a gem of a game. And it's right up there with other fantastic roguelikes like Hades and also Dead Cells. Well, the objective of the game is to survive, and there's an increasing number of enemies coming your way trying to kill you, and it all gets quite frantic really, really quickly. It starts out with only a few enemies, but the screen fills up very, very fast, and soon hundreds of enemies are circling you, trying to eliminate you. Well, the game is played from a top-down perspective, and the map appears to go on and on, so you can choose to run away if you wish, but there's only so far you're going to be able to run before you get stuck into the battle. There's a wide array of weapons to use in the game to fend off all the nasties coming your way. So as well as the weapons, you've also got a bunch of unlockable characters. First of all, you start out with a whip, much like Simon Belmont from Castlevania. And the whip itself extends and whacks enemies at regular intervals while you manoeuvre your way around the map. So the more enemies you kill, the more experience you'll gain, and you'll be able to level up your abilities. For example, you've got holy water that you can put on the floor to trap enemies and create death traps. And you've got holy books that spin around your character, creating a protective shield. Plus you've got garlic that damages your enemies if they get too close. You can get the power-ups that increase your range and damage of your powers, plus increase the currency that you can acquire and also your health. The unique part of the game is that you don't really control the powers, which I alluded to earlier with the whip. All the powers and the abilities are on a set timer, and they fire off periodically. You start out fairly vulnerable, but after a few minutes of a run, you'll be a holy water throwing garlic munching monster killing machine, and it feels slightly counterintuitive. And it does feel like you should be running around activating the powers and abilities, but even though at first it feels foreign, you're going to get used to it very, very quickly. You know, one of the challenges with Vampire Survivors, and one element it shares with other successful roguelikes, is you need to find a decent combo of items that are A, going to help you survive, and B, it's a combination that you enjoy. Now, sometimes these things don't come at the same time, but once it clicks and you've got that perfect build, the game is an absolute joy. You could pick off enemies at range, or you could dive in there and get up close and personal. It depends on the drops per your run, but also how you want to play. Vampire Survivors gives you plenty of choice, and there's an array of tools you can use. It's up to you how you use them. As you're making progress through the levels, you're able to pick up gold, and that is the main currency in the game. Save up your gold, because at the end of runs, you're going to want to spend this on permanent upgrades. That's going to make your next run, hopefully, a little easier. We can level up your weapons as you progress, although there is a ceiling on the weapons and abilities, meaning you can only level up so much before you hit a limit. Unfortunately, this is where much of the fun in a roguelike comes from, increasing your numbers and watching the progress of your little 8-bit character getting more powerful over time. When that stops, I wouldn't say the fun stops, but it does get a little bit more laborious. So as you progress and the difficulty ramps up, there are so many enemies on the screen that quickly moving out of the way no longer becomes an option, you have to face down everything in your path. There's a couple of additional modes in the game to keep things feeling fresh though, so you've got Hyper Mode, so that offers additional gold to collect if you're able to take on the quicker enemies. There's also a nice way of getting through the earlier levels which feels obviously sluggish compared to the mid-game and also the later game levels. You can also evolve your weapons by adding a particular upgrade that pairs well. However, the evolved weapons are fun. They're not really a real incentive for me to keep coming back and doing that time and time again. They just don't really feel different enough. Vampire Survivors is currently in early access and it shows a lot of promise early on. So if the team gets it right and listens to the feedback from the community, so this one could hit the heights of another very successful game from early access called Hades. Now, it's fairly unique in that it blends a bullet hell and roguelike mechanics, and the core gameplay loop is great fun too. So there are a few issues with the starting and later moments of the runs, but you've also got the Goldilocks zone in the middle, where the game feels absolutely amazing. If the team can tap into that and expand upon it, they could be onto a winner. Well, the developers were Ponkel and Luca Galante, and the publisher is Games Delta, Ponkel and Luca Galante again. So the platforms are Android, iOS, Linux, PC, and Mac, and originally released on the 17th of December, 2021. But do remember, this game is in early access, and you can provide feedback to the developers. Well, that is it for my review of Vampire Survivors. Really, really fun game. I'd love to hear what you think about Vampire Survivors down there in the comments, or on Twitter, 
or via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash this week in video games. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.